Um, hello, everyone. Um, today, my topic is automating dark web CTI reports with IG Insight for mis sharing. So, here is today's agenda. And I divide it into three main directions and dark web AI techniques and build the CTI reports, which I will share with you later. And firstly, I'm Xin Li Hong. Uh, my nickname is Yuki Lozi. I'm currently a security researcher at Sidecraft Technology. And I recently graduated from National Tsinghua University, Taiwan. And I published my research on Hikan last year and this year. And we just finished our talk at PyCon TW. So before we start, uh, we know that data leakage is a serious problem. And the leakage of personal data allows criminals understand their victims and build a custom fraudulent activities specific for victims. So we want to shorten the time between when data, data is sold and when the people are aware. So we now have to ask research questions. First, today a post appeared on a dark web forum. We want to determine if it is related to leak, and if so, identify the type of leak event. And second question is, regarding today's dark web activities, what exactly happened? And what new data leak incident has occurred? And final question, can we build a report from the dark web? Because writing a report is time consuming. And this is our uh, architecture of our system. And so there are three stages. Uh, on stage one, I target on the dark web forum and design a crawler function to collect the uh, forum post. Then we create a dark web data set. And stage two will use the data set which we create before, train a classification model to determine which leak type it is. In this research, we use BERT, BERT model, and we want to find the embedding of leak post, it, uh, leak post. So it's better to choose uh, encoder models. So once we done the training, we combine our data set and our predicted results and to a new data called reference data. So, um, which means we have to prepare a reference data for a large language model. Finally, when the security analyst or scientists and operators, they want to know what's happening on the dark web. So they can ask questions. When used, uh, we use IG method to vectorize our questions and uh, our reference data. So um, then compare the similarity. Find the matches answer in reference data, which means it may be the answer to the questions. So in the end, generate a new prompt to ask LLM. Therefore, um, get the dark web intelligence. So that's our architecture. So let's discuss about dark web. So I'm, I'm sure everyone has seen this picture before. And Surface Web is the website that you can use the search engine to see it. The, the picture is showing that the deep web is the largest part of the network. And dark web is just a small part of it. So this, we use Tor browser to con communicate with the, the, the dark web. And this is the mechanism of the Tor browser. And you can find this picture on the Tor project website. Okay, so basically, dark web use HTTP to communicate. In that case, it means your password is insecure on the dark web. The final Tor relay will reveal your login information, which means anyone can see your, your pass password. And that's not good. And at the beginning of the connection, your ISP internet, internet service provider will 
uh, know that you are connecting to a tower node. So you better use a VPN or a proxy. And I also want to mention that uh, the police still can find you if you use the VPN to do the bad things. And this is the case in Taiwan. Uh, the administrator of Facebook page, Lin Bei Haoyou, claimed to have received threats against his family after uh, accusing government's policy. And however, an investigation revealed that he had instructed someone else to make the threats against himself. So his partner was, was not familiar with the process and didn't keep the VPN on, on the entire time. So which led to them uh, being caught. So VPN will, will get caught. So you better follow the laws and be a good citizen. And operation security is not the main subject today, but we can discuss it later after the talk. So uh, we, we simplify the connection procedure. Uh, when we browse the surface web, we use HTTP or HTTPS to connect to the web server. So on the dark web, Tor browser use SOX5 protocol to communicate with the, the website. So how to crawl the data from the dark web? And first, we need to uh, download the Tor browser, and we open our Tor browser. And it will determine which port to create based on your operating system. So in my case, I use Mac, so it will create a port number uh, 9150. So then you set up a crux proxy in your code. So um, it's, not, it's not difficult. You just transform your HTTP traffic to SOX5, and you, you can crawl any website you like. Of course, um, each website ha may have their anti-crawler mechanism, so you need to bypass it one by one. Our second part, AI techniques. So um, let's explore the dark web forum. Our target today is bridge forums, and, I'm, and it's a famous forum on, uh, uh, on, on the stage. So. Bridge Forum is an online marketplace and discussion forum on the dark web. So it facilitates the buying, selling, and exchanging of leaked personal data and other sensitive information. So Bridge Forum is now closed on the dark web, but it will appear from time to time. So there's a discussion board that related, related to leaks. It contains many sub boards. Uh, such as database, stealer logs, uh, click accounts, etc. So many traders are uh, stay in these sub to 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 sell in sensitive information. Okay, so every post belongs to a specific discussion board, and there are thirty three sub boards in Bridge Forum, including data selling, world news and technical discussions. So we chose four sub-boards that related to leakage, and we also select posts that not related to leakage. Uh, we build an other type. So finally, we have five types and 10,901 posts. And you can see the right side, uh, we have five unique types, and it shows the, uh, the number of each type. So in order to know the data, uh, that this data set, um, is it suitable to do the classification task? We use TSNE algorithm to reduce its dimensionality and project onto a two dimensional plan. So the embedding of our post data has divided into five categories. So therefore, the picture shows that the data set is, is fit for classification task because you can see a clear segmentation. Wait. Our post data is all in English text. So we thought we can use the text directly instead of using the maybe the TFIDF first. 
So we consider BERT model can perform better. So the model can be used on various forums. It can fit to any type of post data, such as DREAD. DREAD is also another forum on the dark web, or X, formerly Twitter, etc. So th this is the BERT architecture of our, uh, that we use. So I think I will skip the details of BERT. Uh, we set up the post as input, and the output is the, the embedding in red color. And then we add a softmax layer to uh, calculate the probability of each class. Okay. The final result achieves 94.177% in accuracy. And other metrics achieve the similar results like the, the precision, recall, F1 score. So and this is the confusion matrix that can show the classification result of each category. So the horizontal axis represents the predicted categories, while the vertical represents the actual categories. And the darker the color, the more times this category has been correctly classified. So crack accounts and other category are, are very dark, which means our model can predict well. And the result for still the logs appear lighter in color. But if we examine, uh, examine the actual outcomes, the misclassified result is actually rare. The majority of classification are correct. Uh, however, the lighter color is due to the smaller number of posts in this category. Okay, next is retrieval augmenting generation um, RAG. And RAG has two stages, uh, retrieval and generations. So it retrieves relevant information from a large database and use a generative model to produce response based on the retrieval, retrieved content. So if we explain in these pictures, we, we can see um, we have structured data and, and unstructured data. So split into chunks, which means a small piece of data. And we store it into the a vector database. If we use the segmented query, database return the retrieval chunks. And finally, we can generate a new prompt for LLM. So in our case, we organize a reference data that includes four columns. The first one is supposed, uh, it is uh, the board of a post and the title of the article. And it's related to Taiwan and uh, use regular expression to target Taiwan and TW keywords. And this is, this column is flexible to change the regular expression keyword. And final, final one is five labels is the output of our bird classification model. So ultimately organize a CSV file. The first line is the, the first line is the columns. And you can see this data is from foreign combo list and its title is 12K Taiwan private combo list and it contains Taiwan. And uh, our model classified it as combo list. So here's the response of with RAG and without RAG. And we use uh, LLM to evaluate the response based on the authenticity, uh, which means uh, which response is closer to the reference data. So uh, we've done the evaluation, but um, the with IG is performed better in average. And I won't talk too much in here. Um, if you are interested in the evaluation, uh, we will publish our paper at the SESC workshop in December. So you can see the details then. So we won't, so now we can answer our research questions. Um, today, a post on the dark web, we want to know what type it is. And it's solved. Our model can recognize five different types of dig event, including quick accounts, combo list, databases, still the logs, and other. And research question two, what exactly happened on the dark web 
and one new uh, data leak event has occurred, and it's also solved. And we can ask questions in natural language, and the LLM will answer the question based on our reference data. So in in this case, we ask, please summarize the content, and based on our reference data, and LLM will answer the content. Uh, seems to relate to leak data from various sources, including database, quick accounts, and other security breaches. And the data ranges from user credentials to personal information. And the breach involves institutions from different countries like the United States, Canada, Indonesia, Italy, and more. Okay, next part we discuss LLM on your local site. And Olama is a lightweight framework to, for a large language model. And it's easy to deploy LLM on your local environment. You can use the web UI to interact with LLM. Also can use the LLM embedding in your code instead of open AI embedding. Because everyone should evaluate their situation, some enterprise or private data is um, should prioritize privacy. So download different models on Olama, Olama's page, uh, olama.com slash library, and you can find many different open source models. And personally, I, I think Llama 3.2, 3B is great, and because it's not huge, and you can run the model smoothly on your laptop, and the answer Answer speed is, is not fast compared to 2B or 1B models, but I think it's acceptable. So the deployment is easy. Uh, once you install the, the Olama and Docker, just copy and paste these two commands and you will have a local LLM platform. So uh, the UI is completely the same as chat GPT. And web UI will memorize all your uh, chat history. And you can also select a model to interact with. You can download multiple models for different use case. Okay, finally, embedding. If you want to use RIG to on your local environment, not just LLM is local. Don't forget your embedding. Model, uh, uh, embedding model has to be local too. Uh, both embedding model are and the inference model can damage your privacy. If the data is highly private or important, you need to ensure both the embedding model and the inference model are open source and can run locally, providing you with the highest level of privacy. Okay, uh, this is the example code to use embedding model in your work. So if you use Olama after you download a model, you can use it for embedding or inference. In this case, it's uh, embedding. So open AI embedding is fast and great, but it's not private. And, uh, and most importantly, it's costly. So eventually it depends on your use case. Finally, build a CTI report. So let's ask questions. We prepare eight questions that are related to security report, like the summarize the content, what types of information are involved, list the data that are related to Europe, Taiwan, finance, and what events are particularly important. Help me compile the occurrence of each country. And are the data breach incident concentrated in specific regions or countries? And which specific industry or sectors are most affected by these leaks? So we can, uh, we can discuss about MISP. And I think there's no need to mention that MISP is a great open source software that can eas easily create CTI report. So this is the simple command that you can build your own MISP using Docker. So uh, my friend and I present a Hacking 101 course at, in Hikon last year, and we mentioned a little bit about MISP and PyMISP 
automation, and we create a small lab for the course. Uh, the slides is written in Chinese, but if you are interested, you can find the slides on Hikang 2023 webpage. So by the way, my friends Sean and I maintain a website called sectours.tw, and it's a website for sharing open source uh, cybersecurity tools, and it's all in Chinese, but we are planning an update next month, and there will be information available in English by then. So if you are interested in it, feel free to follow us. So back to our slides, uh, we introduced PyMisp. PyMisp is a Python library to access MISP platform via their REST API. So we need to, uh, we need to use PyMisp to communicate with MISP. Having the API key is the first thing we are going to do. So be below the administration button, you can see the list all keys and add the, uh, authentication key. And once we got the, we get the API key, we can do anything we want. So now can integrate our RIG results with MISP. So we automate the, uh, the process of add object and add attribute and add tag. So we can, uh, swiftly build a JSON file. And this JSON file can create a MISP event. So we can upload this event to the MISP. So here's the final report. 